Okay, can you see the book now? Yes. Yes, that's the 12. All right, we're looking at a different kind of verb now. There are two basic kinds of verbs in Greek. There are the omega verbs, which we've studied up to this point, and this introduces the me verbs. That is the moon iota ending that I've highlighted here on the top of the screen. And so the end in me, and these verbs are older verbs. There are not as many of them in the New Testament, but there are the ones that are there, several of them are frequently found in the New Testament. So we have to learn them. Also, the being verb, I am, is a me verb. And so we, we're we going to find it quite a lot, quite a lot in the New Testament. So it's, it's there. Here is the being verb right here. It'll be in the next lesson. Amen. And so this uh, being verb here, and we'll be looking at John 6, 20, just a minute. It's what we have, what we have learned up to this point. So we'll, we'll go through it just in a minute. But the me verbs are created in two kinds of verbs. There's the verb and then the, uh, the me verbs. And so the, some of the verbs we've, we've been studying up to this point, all the verbs that we've studied have ended in on Now, then there are contract verbs, L-O-O verbs, O verbs, contractions. But the me verb is different, and uh, we'll see some, the main differences here in this study. Now, let's look at this passage. This is, of course, lesson 12, and this is John 6, 20. Uh, this is, he has it here for us to illustrate one of the, one of the verbs. Here I know it's, it's, it has the me verb, a me, which will be in the next lesson. It is a me verb. This is ego, ego, a me, may, or base they, base they. And so this is ego is, our English word ego comes from it. I think we've already had this in our vocabulary, but it's I, it's a pronoun I. And a me is a being verb, it's a me, I am. I am. And the being verbs are potentiated for us. Right? Is audio distorted for you a bit? Is that what you're saying? All right. All right. So we have here ego, a me. May is the word not. And so, a no or not. And it's for base day. And this is from Fobeo. And I'll write it down here for you. I'll put it in. I'll better go in symbol font. I'll put it in symbol font real quick. Yeah, there it is. There it is. It should be. Bell. That's that word right here. Oh, bell. It's an L verb. And that's fear. That's I fear. So we'll get rid of that one. But that's the word we're dealing with here. And so it's for bell. This is imperative mood, which is way beyond what we've covered up to this point. And so what I'm going to give you this, you just have to go with me on it. We'll cover it later, uh, be a, uh, over more than a year from now. May for base day is be not afraid. And so uh, 
my this article right here this is or no or not and it is not to be not afraid and it actually literally would be translated stop being afraid stop fearing and so and he says i go i am and so remember your verbs all greek verbs have their pronoun with them so this has its pronoun it's first person singular verb present tense being verb and so what it's saying is i am so the word i is done because the verb itself has the word i in it and so whenever ego is used it's always Ego is always emphatic. Any question there? So when you see that, and the Mexican will tell you that, the grammar books will tell you that. And so the file that I sent you, the uh, file uh, regarding the lexicon and grammar notes file, and hopefully you do have that file. The file will will uh, tell you that and you can somewhere with this word particle may all right now when you look for it it'll be under moeda and in alphabetical order greek verbs are, are, are the two conjugations and they differ from the omega verbs in the present and there is stems uh, in all of them by that uh, systems this is not stems and all other systems that would be the future tense and so forth they would uh, they would be conjugated just like one of the omega verbs so we wouldn't have to add any new information there the endings of my of me are the old the primary active endings now the endings of them remember endings earlier we learned all phase a omen our endings O S A O N E T U C, and so it's me S S Sigma C Min T A S I. So U C it's A S I to E T it's T A instead of O S Min. Notice the the connecting vowel has dropped off. That's what we have here. I S A. And so we we we've lost the connecting valve here. So we want the omega connecting valve omicron epsilon and add the endings directly to the stem. That's the, the short vowel on the stem uh, usually occurs in the plural. We're going to take three of the very most common B verbs and we'll have their stem. But I'm trying to get through my lexicon and find. Other books will give you the stems of the words, and we'll we'll try to do that. And I'll just keep adding to the book because I'm trying to research and make this more valuable, this material more valuable than even some lexicons are. So uh, we have three verbs here that we're going to look at here, and that they're very common. Tips me, tips me. And the stem is theta epsilon. And so we're going to see that that's your stem. And that's a place, right? S E T, set or place. Now, sit, like you sit in a chair, but I've set the table. Say, I, I set or place something into an arrangement. Do me is the stem is do. And this I give, I give. And uh, histamine, you notice they're operating histamine. And the stem is star. And it's I stand, I stand. Now then let's look at these. And again, you don't have this root right here, a rudder stem, but and I added it today. Okay. I saw that it wasn't there until I found it. Right, so we'll be using the uh, roots or stem, and we'll be placing them here. Now, right here with this stem, 
we'll take our first one, theta epsilon theta, and so the theta eta right there. But what happens is this short vowel epsilon here, we highlight it again, the short vowel up here, and I just highlight it to the top, that short vowel right there, epsilon becomes an eta, so it becomes theta. So we get theta out of and instead of theta eta, theta eta instead of theta epsilon. So yeah, eta is a long vowel, long e, and epsilon short e. So in the singular number, the vowel becomes in our stem becomes long. So it become long. So right here we have here we have eta theta. So you take, here's your ending me, sigma, and then thing it, I don't know why it does that, but then we have C, and then the, on the plural then, it, it retains the stem, the theta eta stem, I'll highlight it again at the top, about near the top of the screen, and so we have it down here, so I'll do this. There we have that. That's your stem. Notice the up above here, singular up here, move my mouse around. It become long, become an eta, but it retains the basic system in the plural, in the plural forms. Thay, thay, thay. From theta epsilon, theta epsilon, theta epsilon. And so we get a men, tiths, they men. And any, any questions about how this works? All right, so this is your basic conjugation of it. Now, we have the infinitive, it also retains the, the stem theta epsilon, and the, the vowel in the stem doesn't lengthen. And it's a nigh ending, nigh. No, alpha yoda, and of course, alpha yoda is the diphthong, right? Two place, two place or set. Now, this, I made some corrections here, so I will send you this after the class tonight, send you this uh, redone book. It'll have this thread in it, and it'll have a correction or two down here that I found in there. I found an arrow over here somewhere. I don't remember where it was. I think it was right here. I think this had an accent mark on it. I can't remember. But I found one that had a mistake, right? All right, now, he's got three different, all three words. We've got epithemy here in this column and the infinitive form. And then we're going to make diddle me. And that's I, I give. Diddle me. Oh, this accent did. And your do is your stem. Do, uh, there's your stem. Remember that Omicron becomes Omega with this long O. You know me. You know, you know, see. You know, you know, see. And so we have here, it becomes a long O. And then in the plural, it goes back to the short O. Dito, then. And and so that's how the form will work. Any questions? All right. Can you hear me, uh, Matt? Can you still hear me? Go ahead and speak if you can. Oh, I can hear you fine. I was just checking to see if Bobby could. Okay, that's fine. All right, well, we'll record it. And we've had this. Uh, Bobby may have settings on his computer on, I'm suspecting. Okay. But that's what I suspect. Uh, so, to me, notice the rut and the stamp in is star. And I'm stopping as a rut. Some books call it rut and some call it stem. What, I, what has confused me is some books seem to distinguish between a rut and a stem. Other books call it a rut and a 
to the other same. So, yeah. That's it, folks, at least. Not the great among themselves. Not this, just the problem based. So, I'll fucking thumbs. Yeah, brother, brother Marion, we're having trouble following now. It's breaking up really bad. You were pretty distorted before, but now you're completely broken. Yeah. I'm going to unplug my camera and put it back in. And just as a point of reference, Benjamin, you sound very clear to me, even though Marion was breaking up. Uh, you hear me now? Yeah, sounds good. I uh, unplugged my camera and plugged it back in. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. And so this becomes, this is your rut up here or stem. I'm going to use those two interchangeably now. Again, I found textbooks that, that uh, make a distinction of others that don't, and others some of you and run the stem interchangeably. The alpha here of this stem up here, my mouse around, becomes beta. And of course, we have the rubber in the iota history. And uh, sand is, and dot is stays, is stacy, and then the valve of the stem becomes normal. Those go back to the short form. And so it's your stem. And that will be histamine. 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 And histate will be the next histate. And again, I don't know how to exist. Histate. And histamine. Stana. To stand. Any other any questions or comments there? In the same and in short, in the plural and in the infinitive forms. Still breaking up, breaking up really bad. I'm having trouble following. I do quite well. All right. I'm going to do it again. About that. Is that any better? Sounds good at the moment. <laughs> okay. Uh, I plugged it directly into the computer rather than to another plug in. Okay. Maybe that'll make the difference. All right. Okay. The present and passive of me verbs use the same endings as the regular lack of verbs. And so we have, there's your stem. And remember, this stem here was sta. Sta was histamine, sta. Here's your stem up here, a root. And right here it is again, there's sta. We do this, that will highlight it. I'm going to get to that. And so, the up really, stem, and then my ending, side. And then we have Amatha, 
Slamat Sustay Stanta Stanta. And then we have the stars. It's it's stars. It's stars. We invented the form of it. So the endings on it are just like are in. Uh, Bobby can hear us. That's good. <laughs> uh, so. All right, good deal. All right. So this is your basic form for the middle passive. Remember, in the middle, in the, in the present tense, we're in the middle present tense here. The middle and passive have the same form. They only have different forms in the past tense and the future tense. They have a different form of the and they feel off the basic errors. So what we run into then is uh, the middle passive. It's a contextual question to this whether or passive, and, it's, and so it's a contextual uh, question that we have to deal with. All right. I'll go a little longer since we got started later. Okay, we'll we'll try to get to the location. The talk of me verbs is much smaller than that. Several of them are on the most frequently used words. Uh, a me is one of those that will have a whole lesson on it. Very many lessons. It's a verb, and we'll focus. So, yeah. So let's look at our. Uh, someone. I think Bobby maybe needs to mute. I think we're hearing desk noise or something. Yeah, Bobby, we're hearing a bunch of pen scratching and stuff. I think it's making his audio distort. Okay. All right. Okay. So just mute your mic until you want to speak. Hagios is the rough breathing. And this is the, uh, the word for set apart. It's the word translated holy. I'm going to get, put another word here. Uh, it, it's, it's bold, bold print, but let's not worry about that. Uh, I'll put it in symbol. Hosios, it has anything on it. Those, I don't see what I can pick up. I think Omicron and a rough reading with a rough reading. Hosios. And it's also translated holy. Now, if you have my book on the Roman volume one, I or the combined edition, I have a whole chapter devoted to the distinction between these two words, and uh, it's very fruitful, very uh, uh, very useful in your study of the Bible. But two, I'll, I'll delete this one now and get rid of it. But if you don't have that, uh, I'll, I'll send it to you. Hagios and uh, the word Hagio is become an English brief, J-G-I-O, for holy. And so we have uh, holy, set apart, separated. I, I remember uh, you can separate the sheep and the goats, for example. Uh, I grew up on a cattle ranch and we was feed our cattle in feedlots so we would put we put uh, the heifers in one feedlot we put the steers in a feedlot between them and the bulls on the other end of the feedlot uh, away from the heifers okay so we separated them with the steers so we'd have about 150 head about about probably 50 head of heifers or 75 heifers maybe and about uh the rest of them would be stairs and bulls, about, about 75 of them. Okay, now we have a uh, hoi hagioi, so we'd separate them. See, they're in a separate group. If we're saints in this uh, plural form, it's translated saints. The saints, hoi hagioi, the saints. And a saint is a, someone who's been set apart by God. That's all they are. And if you're a Christian, you're a saint. Okay. All right. I know the world has a different definition of saint, but uh, what uh, the Bible does not. 
Okay, now we have a compound word here. It says apodidomy. So I'm going to break it apart just with this right here. And so it's two words together, apo and didomy. And so it's a compound word. It's going to be uh, conjugated just like didomy. And so we'd have apodidomy, and then we'd just have all the same form. We had back up here for didomy. Right here, these forms right here. But I can't highlight them right there, those right there, and then these down here. Those right there, those forms. So we have all those forms that just have oppo on the beginning of it. So it's a little height form. It's I give from or I give back. So we put it in English, oppo is from. I give from giving from me to you, or I give back, I return or I repay. Any questions? That I will do me. And here's another word. And, and your apo did me will conjugate it just like did me. And we have uh, several compounded with did me. So these compound words uh, in the form of to give. A fee a me, a fee me. This is also a compound word. And I'll break it again. So it's apo. And what happens is the apo becomes off, becomes a fee. And because you can't put that Omicron and uh, the Oda together, so it becomes a fee, a fee, a fee. And so it's Amy, and it's got a set mark on it. Amy is a verb itself, a word itself. And so that's a common word as well. I leave, let go, or forgive. And you can come back and look some more. So, so God forgives us, and I think this is in Acts 238, forgiveness or remission of sins. Take numi is uh, also a, a uh, word, it's a main verb, and to show, that's a very interesting word. That the, I don't have it listed here, but I'm gonna highlight for your benefit the there is your root or stem right there. And so you can take that stem and build on it and get your form. So you make a note of that for your purposes. That I looked it up in my, uh, I don't think I have it laid out in my notes that I sent you, that file that I sent you. I think it's in that file. Hello. And again, it's a compound word. And I'll break it again. And of course, when I did that, made the capital doubt over there for me. Sorry about that. The envelopes. The eyes through the prepositions are in bold bold is to throw or something thrown. And so this is to throw through the envelopes or to thrust through somebody. And in this case, to do it with words. And so you slander them. You, you thrust them through with words. And it's the word translated devil also. So, of course, we, from the book of Job, we know that Satan was the original slander. Well, he was a slanderer from the beginning. Okay. There's no truth in him. Okay. And we, of course, we come to the idea. Yeah, we've already had it. Erotao, erotao, I ask and I ask a question. So I ask a question. We get to another word here that we run into. I don't know whether we've had the other word that goes with this a, a synonym, but we do have so this is kind of rough breathing. This has come into a the English the hetero prefix, H-E-T-E-R-O, hetero prefix. And this is another of a different and and heteros, for instance. And and then homos is the same. Now we have heteros and alos, A L L O S, 
Lambda, Lambda, Omicron, Sigma. And I'll write it up here for you. All those. Okay. What we'll do is we'll put it in symbol font again. And you can see because that's the word, the accent mark and the smooth breathing of the alpha with an accent mark on it, alos, alos. And our word, English word alloy comes. So it's things of the same nature, whereas heteros is things of a different nature, but they're, they're synonyms. And you'll find these words in, together in some passages, uh, such as Galatians 1, and you'll find it in Galatians 1, verses 6 and 7. Those two words are contrasted. And the King James Version translates them both as another, but the American Standard and some of your other translations make a distinction. So if you are misusing the King James, you might want to get an American Standard. Some of your other modern speech translations also probably will distinguish between the two words. Uh, another, which is not another, uh, and so that's how the King James renders it. A different gospel, which is not another gospel, the American Standard reads, renders it. So they are different words. That's the explanation. There's no contradiction there, of course. Uh, the King James didn't mistranslate it, but it just doesn't uh, doesn't clarify. It leaves it uh, fuzzy. Any questions or comments? And uh, just so you know, um, I, we're not able to see your screen for the past few minutes. So maybe if you uh, stop sharing and resharing, maybe that'll reset for us. Okay. We're following right. along on our Word documents, but just so you know. Okay. All right. Let me let me see what that is. I don't know what. I'll hit the share up there. All right. Yeah, I mean we can see the screen. It's just that it's showing the last page. It's not moving with you right now. Okay. Yep, I see lesson 12 now. At the bottom. Okay. Can you see the vocabulary now? No. No, it shows lesson 12 on our screen. Why is it not? Yeah, now I see vocabulary. Oh, yeah, let's see now. Oh, I don't know what's going on here. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, we have Hagios. What did you? Where did I lose you? On the whole thing. We were we were following along in our documents. Okay, so, Hagios is totally set apart, and Hostos that I typed up here. Uh, Hostos is also translated holy, and it's. Uh, has a different meaning. It has a rough reading as well, Hosios. And in my book on the uh, role of women, I, I have a whole chapter devoted to the distinction between those two words. Hoi, Hagioi, and the holy, the holy one, the better, trans, better, better translation, a good translation of it. And the saints, the holy ones, the saints. And uh, and the Bible teaches uh, all of God's faithful people are called so, saints. So the term saint is Christians. Apo didome, and of course I'll break it. It's a compound word, apo and didome. And so it's going to be conjugated just like didome. So what I did is I, I went back up here and showed you the conjugation of didome. It'll have the same conjugation as did me all the way down through here. Can you see the file? I'm looking at them. Listen. It looks like it's still showing the vocabulary for me. Uh, I'd suggest uh, maybe just roll with it and keep going down to Thanatos because we, we heard what you said about the other ones. Okay, all right. Thanatos is death. And uh, I remember in high school, we had to read a poem called Thanatopsis. It's a treatise on death. 
thanatopsis. So uh, thanatos, even that word, is coming to the English language. And we have a histamine, which we've already looked at. Histamine, it's I stand. It can be transitive or intransitive, and it depends on how it's being used. And so that's kind of, we haven't studied transitive and transitive verbs, but we'll look at that later. Up here we have the next word in the vocabulary is cathistomy. Cathistomy, I'll break it here. And so it's kata, and the, the ta alpha ending uh, becomes a theta. And because you can't put an alpha and the other together here without making a song out of it. So, so it becomes cathistomy, cathistomy. So it's still, it will be conjugated like history, but it doesn't have the rough breathing on it. Kind of make a note of that for yourself. Cathistomy, it's to set in, or more literally, kata would be down to set down or a point. We, we use a, our English idiom, we set in the office, or the Greek would have to sit down into an office or sit, like they can sit in a chair in a seat. Uh, the Pharisees sat in Moses' seat, so they sat in the seat, indicating they taught what Moses taught. And when they did that, Jesus said, obey them. When they sat in Moses' seat, you know, you know, you do what they say. He didn't say that, do what they say when they try to bind the uh, traditions of men. Lampo, and our word lamp probably comes from this, I believe it does, is to shine, or it's the verb, of course, I shine. That's an omega verb, of course. And look, the, uh, the, 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 and then, of course, you break it between these two, look, the, and so it's got three syllables, look, the, uh, the, the, it's a lampstand. And of course, their lamps weren't like our electric lamps, they were all, they were all lamps. Look, nose, two syllables, look, nose, break it right there where my uh, cursor is. Look, nose, lamp, osme, osme, and that was an older smell, it's going to be a sweet, depending on it, define this, an adjective might define it for us. Is and we come part the way we had para we had me over here we had did me here now we have para did me over here again it's going to be it made an uppercase here for me a para did me and it para is beside so it's para did me beside. I give over a betray. So this is the word for betray. When uh, Jesus was betrayed by Mrs. Iscariot, he betrayed him, he borrowed it, he gave him over. Right? Pim play me, Pim, Pim play me. Break up, you say, well, pimple, pimple me, pimple me. I fill or I fulfill. So it could be fill something up or fulfill something. Right. And then we have pros canulo. And of course, this is pros. And this is to bow or bend yourself toward the other person. Now, when it says with a native object, this is uh, the direct object for it is always in the native case. So you get worship to someone you don't. And so the worship is to them. So its object will be in the dated case, not in the accusative case. That's what this is trying to tell us here. And we have tithomy, set or place. Or I stand, I'm sorry. I place, stand or lay down. Okay. Tithomy. All right. I place or set and I set it. Then we have the adverb tote, then. Tote, then. All right. And I hope we don't have this kind of trouble next time. We, this is kind of new for us. Uh, the system, I think they've upgraded their system somehow. Okay. Any questions about any of this? If one wants to discuss. 
and we've gone about our normal time. What we'll do now, I'll give you an assignment for that. Let me do this and come back here. I want you to take this uh, text A and translate it, okay? And so you're going to get into, you'll have some omega verbs like we have, like hold the elbows at Bale, tone, get on, hastain, and on, correct on, every, and then a period. So we'll just track what that means. Of course, we've had one of this word, this is one of our vocabulary words, and some of these other ones are prior words we've had in our vocabulary. Now there's diddle me, and I'll just run through some real quick. There's diddle me again, tith me, and heratao, and it's covering me up here. And we have tote, it's a word of tithemy. And you can see they knew me. And that's true. I'm just giving you the basic forms of diddle me again. So you're going to get to use these words several times. Approach to that O down here. Any question now? <clears throat> now we we talked about the movable new just a little bit earlier in earlier lessons. It originally was put on when you ended the word with a vowel and the next word began with a vowel. Like we in English, we, just, we wouldn't say a, a, a apple, we'd say an apple. We'd put an N on it to break it up for uh, so that it would sound good. And so that's what it originally was for. But uh, they began to put movable news that didn't follow the rules on the uh, following the word, two vowels were together. Uh, a lot of the scribes later, they began to just add the movable new in a number of places and where it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't have followed that rule. So one of the problems we get into is textual criticism. A lot of the textual variants are movable news uh, where we wouldn't normally expect them to be. And so they talk about a lot of textual variants, but it doesn't change the word at all. And just have movable news in there sometimes. Am I making sense what we're saying? And so yes, you, you can see that from time to time. And uh, it would wouldn't even it wouldn't have, have no effect whatsoever on the meaning of the words or the meaning of the text. Right here's a movable new right here and this he's put it in there to tell you that it is. And it's right here. Okay. And so Normally, you see that word wouldn't have it there. So when you're looking at the word, drop the new off, and when you conjugate it, see, that's what he's trying to tell you to do. And, uh, and this is common in, in some of your Greek manuscripts will have news in there where you wouldn't expect it. I think this is also a movable new right here. I think it doesn't have it in parentheses, but right. I think this probably should have a parentheses around it. And it should have a thing right there. Okay. All right. So you might run into that. So don't let that confuse you. All right. Do you have questions? All right. I just noticed in your text there where you added that parentheses way over to the left of the line where it says note, there's there's a parentheses yeah. there that begins it. Yeah. I'll take it out. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Right. Now, I want you to do this for me. That this, I believe, is very, very, very helpful. Uh, when I studied Russian uh, and was in Russia in 1994, my Russian was just, I had learned it. Uh, I had about a year. So I, had, uh, so I went over. And so I was forced to speak it learn it and I didn't really learn it until I got to where I was thinking in Russian and so and of course it's a Greek based language so if you want to study Russian uh, if you study Greek it makes it much simpler because it's it's a hell of a language it's a Greek language uh, but what I want you to do here is and this will probably take us all week this week take all these and translate them into Greek from English to Greek 
So you're going to have to think in Greek or make yourself think in Greek to do that. And that's that's harder, but that's where you're going to really learn it. All right. So Brother, that's lectures. I don't see that on my uh, my lesson 12 on the. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. There's a uh, there's a blank page in between. I missed it. Never mind. I got you. I don't know. Yeah. OK. Something made a blank page. I'm sorry. All right, well, do that if you would right there and do this up here. And that'll probably take all, all of the hour next week. Okay. All right. Now, so I have a question. I'm, are you saying to do all three of those exercises or just the first and last? I'm confused. Six A and 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 text, uh, tra translate here. This this right here. So, so A, A and then uh, the part translating into English from English yes. to Greek. I mean, okay. Okay. Any questions? Okay, we'll we'll try to do that as we go through. I think that will help you learn it. I, okay, if there are no questions now, uh, probably here you you probably ready. We will probably you will probably drop jump into the uh, translation class. What we'll do is we'll be translating out of the text of the Bible. And it will translate from the text of the Bible. I may start over, and I've already done this with a group with first, second, third John, because they're the simple, they're simple. We may do them first. But what we'll do is if we do that, I'll I'll give you the whole text of the of the and we'll start that. We may I may start you on a on a group a separate class to do that. Okay. Any questions? Uh, we'll we'll talk we'll talk about it next year, okay, a year from now. So we have people to start this class, then they drop out. Of course, I'll, because I'm not a great teacher, but but uh, sometimes I wonder if it's not too much work. It's it's a it's so fruitful if you stay with it. It's it, it's a whole lot better than any commentary. You you have your own commentary. You make your own commentary. Is that, is that clear? They want to understand what I'm, I'm making myself clear. Yes. Sir. Yes. Okay. I hope you'll stay with it. All right, fellas. We're gonna. I'm going to get over here, and I'm going to stop recording.